Hi, thanks for tuning in. A long awaited recipe. I've always wanted to cook with monkfish. We've got two delicious monkfish tails here and the bone runs along the middle of them, which I'm going to keep and we're going to cook them in fillets. I'm not going to break up the natural texture of the fish. First of all, we're just going to marinate these lovely monkfish fillets with the juice of half a lime. We've got a little turmeric, which is really good for fish. When you're using delicate fish like this, it's always a good idea to tone down on the spices and capitalize on flavor rather than overbearing it. So what does that actually mean? So avoid like cloves and star anise and cassia, garam masala out of the question. You want delicate spices. So there's some lime juice, turmeric, a little bit of Kashmiri chili, a hint of ajwain, which really gives a unique taste. It's going to be very subtle in that quantity. And we need a good pinch of salt. And I'm just going to give that a good stir and uh, make sure everything's covered, skews fingers. And fish doesn't need marinating overnight, not, not these little delicate fillets. So we're going to come back and pan fry this separately on an, in a non-stick pan to get some texture onto the fish. And this is British Indian restaurant style, even though monkfish doesn't appear on too many um, British Indian restaurants because it's expensive. And uh, so half an hour. Let's get back into the garden. It's nice and sunny. Get that marinated. So apologies about the unprofessional camera angle, but I'm a practical person. So we've got a nice bunch of coriander here. Nice and subtle, vibrant, you know, to go along with the fresh theme. We've got one nice ripe tomato chopped up into <laughs> six. We've got a split chili. Got some cumin seed and yes, cassia lime leaves. Two or three cassia lime leaves that are going to go into the oil. I know what you're saying. Oh, I've never seen cassia lime leaves used in British Indian restaurants. Well, they use them quite regularly. If uh, anybody checks out my Maya um, restaurant behind the scenes videos, we've got some just chopped garlic here, about four or five cloves, some coconut cream. We've got some tamarind, which is absolutely great. In the bottle it really saves a lot of job considering um, or comparing it to using fresh tamarind and taking the seeds out those seeds can break your blender if you're not careful and we got 350 mils 400 mils of base gravy it's about three tablespoons of tomato puree there with plenty of water and I've added the salt to that because there are no onions. The only onions are in the base gravy. If you want to cook this recipe from scratch, just sweat down the onions instead of the base gravy and um, away you go. It's as simple as that. All the ingredients are in the description of the video. So it's time to get cooking. Lovely sunny day today. So I want to get some texture onto this monkfish. I'm going to be using an aluminium pan to do the finished curry, but um, a non-stick pan here, just to fry the monkfish, because an aluminium pan will have everything sticking. I'm using a little extra virgin coconut oil. Beautiful color on the fish. And I'm just going to fry both sides, perhaps two minutes on one side and about a minute to a minute and a half on the other. Always use a plastic spatula on your non-stick pans, you don't want to scrape the non-stick off. Thank 
Well, they're just how I want them. Just going to put this uh, to the side now, take them off. So, next aluminium pan, coconut oil again. Use any oil you want. The coconut oil is going to really enforce the coconut taste. Just want that to heat up. Next, in with the cumin and cassia lime leaves. So, fry those cassia lime leaves, get them hydrated again. Want them to turn slightly darker. We'll come back in a moment. Smelling wonderful. Add the chopped garlic. Why aren't I using ginger? You can if you like. I'm going to use tamarind for the sharpness. Smells great. And with the green chilies. Tomato. And I do apologise. Two teaspoons of taste of Indian masala supreme there. So that's tomato. Some of the, some of the acidity is cooked out of it. The oil stripping now with a coconut cream powder. I just find it so convenient to use that. Use coconut milk, coconut cream block, all the same, and just give that a stir till it's nice and smooth. Yeah, about 45 seconds later, let's add the base gravy. Heated the base gravy up in the microwave. Now we just want that to come to a good boil. So as that's come into a heat, we can add some tamarind. There's so many acidic ingredients you can use in Indian food. It's one of the five flavours of good Indian food and also Thai. So tamarind, lime, lemon, kokum, very uh, authentic to India, kokum. So. What we're going to do now is add the tomatoes and the coriander. Because they need stirring, I don't want to be stirring this dish once the monkfish has been added. I'm almost going to poach the monkfish in the gravy so it will all be stirred it will come to a nice boil and we shall return so that's looking nearly as good as it smells next it's time to add the monkfish we can add any all of those juicy oils as well why not it's the weekend So, I'm going to turn those after about another minute. Nice and gently. Definitely no garam masala added at the end of this. We've got a nice delicate curry brewing there. So I'm just going to let the base gravy thicken up a little bit. It's a daisy. And that's cooked. So I'll just let that rest. We'll come back and serve a bowl.
little bit of ginger for garnish. Thanks for watching.